I believe you are a false prophet and deceiver. <laughs> Do you, Mary? <laughs> no. So I'm asking someone else's questions of here. Of course, of course. That's not evident to everyone. I hope that it is evident. Yeah. Okay. I believe you are a false prophet and deceiver, the same as the ones Jesus warned about, warned us about in the Bible. You need to repent, otherwise you will spend forever in hell. Yes, I've had a lot of emails from Christian people on, on this particular topic, so they're not really asking me a question. So firstly, it's not a question, it's a statement. And, uh, and generally with statements, uh, my general feeling is, you're allowed to feel what you feel. I know you're not right. That's okay with me. Yeah. You can believe that if you wish. It's going to be to your own detriment in the future in the sense that you had the opportunity to listen to Jesus and you didn't take it. And that's fine. Like, you know, you don't have to accept that, but that's what's actually happening here. Mm -hmm. However, um, I'd like to address some of the issues probably surrounding the, what the, the person raises, yeah. the statement itself. Yeah. Firstly, there is no uh, devil-tormented hell that you stay in forever. Mm -hmm. There are hells in the spirit world where people who have created a dark condition have to reside because they need a dark residence in order to meet their condition. And so they have actually created their own hell. That's the reality. God, God didn't create the hell. God created the potential for the hell to exist by giving us free will. But the people themselves created their own hell and then they live in it. But they don't have to live in it permanently. It's not a permanent condition. They can change at any time. You know, a loving God doesn't consign people to eternal torment, mm -hmm. doesn't consign people to eternal everlasting death and, or eternal everlasting tormented hell. Yeah. And in fact, if you believe that such a God exists, you believe in a very, very harsh God. Mm -hmm. A person, a God actually, that is more harsh than the average person on earth. And I suggest that God is far more loving than the average person on earth and definitely not as hard as the average person on earth. Now, the issue I feel as well is that if you believe in such a God, then you're basically fear, frightened of him mm -hmm. and you're frightened of what he will do to you and you're frightened that he will throw you in hell for the devil to torment for the rest of your existence. And if you email me such an email, you're trying to frighten me into the same condition that you're in. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but I can't be frightened into such condition because I know that no such devil exists and no such eternal torment exists. I mm -hmm. know for certain because I've seen these locations. I know what they look like. So, so you cannot convince me that I deserve to be consigned to hell. I know the people who arrive in hell. They're very similar to the person who asked this question actually, in the sense that they are people who are full of rage and anger and fear. And many of these people finish up, finish up in hell, mm. in the hells, not understanding they can get out because they believed while they're on earth that you can't get out. Yeah. And they have to have people like myself come to them and tell them, you're allowed to get out of here. You, you, all you need to do is change your belief systems and change your emotional condition to get out of here. I also know that I'll never be consigned to hell. And I know the reason why. And that is, I desire to love. I desire to grow. I desire truth. This is my condition. And I know that even if I arrive, arrived in the spirit world in hell, I would never stay there for very long because my desire is to grow in love. So my suggestion to the person is that it, if I do arrive to the, in the spirit world in hell, I'm not going to be there very long because I have huge desire for God and for love and to grow in love and truth. And also because my actions on earth are not the actions of a person who is violent in their nature and not the actions of a person who does not love. So there's a high likelihood I will never find myself in hell when I arrive in the spirit world. So I'm not frightened of such a thing. I'm not frightened whether I arrived there or not. So just to clarify, you're saying that hell, as this person is asserting that you'll spend forever in hell, you're saying that's not possible? No. No because person in existence has ever spelt forever in hell. So you're saying that hell, while hell, a hell-ish place does exist? Hell-ish places do exist. Yep. Yeah, that it is not somewhere that you're consigned to forever? No. And that you can always grow your character? Yes. So why then does this teaching exist? 
It exists for many reasons. Uh, one of the reasons is uh, human society historically went through a degradation of the soul. It went through a process of withdrawing from God, withdrawing from ethics, withdrawing from love. And as a result, the soul of the particular people involved became degraded to such a condition that when they passed over into the spirit world, they passed into these hells. And for many hundreds and for some of them thousands of years, they didn't get out of those conditions. And if you've been in a place for a thousand years, you'll start to believe that you're there forever. And so you then start teaching other people on earth that they'll be there forever if they keep on doing the things they're doing. Mm. And this is how false beliefs get perpetrated on earth. Spirits go through a certain experience. They're in that experience for a long period of time. They believe the experience to be the only truth. And then they reinforce this so-called truth that they have discovered through their personal experience back onto the earth and try to force other people to believe the same thing. Then, of course, there's a build-up of fear that occurs as a result of that. And then those people pass over into the same dark condition. And then the next generation pa passes over in the same condition. And then historically, there has been, in some cases, a hundred generations in series pass over into the same condition. Into a hellish condition. To a hellish condition. Yeah. yeah. Now, you imagine, if you are those hundreds of generations, what are you going to be telling the next generation? You're going to be telling them that a hell certainly exists and they're going to go there if they keep doing what they're doing and so forth. Does that make sense? Yeah. You'll tell them what you believe to be true without knowing why the hellish condition was created. Mm -hmm. Once these spirits began to understand why the hellish condition was created, that they had personally created it through the choices of their own soul, they started to grow. They started to get out of the hellish condition and that's why nowadays there are more teachings on earth that you can get out of the hellish condition than there are than there are just everybody believing that you can't. But there must be an investment in people on earth, mm -hmm. leaders of religious movements, in continuing this uh, teaching of hell? Certainly, and I feel the investments are sort of, there are quite a number of reasons. One reason is because many of these ministers themselves are afraid of hell, mm -hmm. and they're afraid that their, you know, people that they're trying to help will enter up, end, end up in hell if mm -hmm. they keep doing their unloving things that they're doing. So there's a, a so fear-based fear concern. So there's a fear-based concern yep. inside the minister or the teacher, and so he then impresses upon them how important it is that they do not do that particular thing because they'll end up in hell, which yeah. may be a truth, actually. Uh -huh. They might end up in a hell, but it's, not, it's just not a hell that's eternal. And, and they impress this upon the person so strongly that they start becoming angry and violent in the oppression yeah. in order because they're afraid of the person making a wrong choice, which really is about their own fear about themselves making the, a wrong choice mm -hmm. at some point. So they start feeling responsible for their members of their congregation, right? All the mm -hmm. people they're teaching. Mm -hmm. And the problem with taking responsibility for other people's choice and decisions is it's impossible. From God's perspective, and as the Bible actually says, each one will account for his own sin. It says that in the book of Romans. Each person who, who works through stuff on earth will account at some point in the future for their own sin. Nobody else can do it for you. Jesus can't do it for you. Mm -hmm. Your minister can't do it for you. You've got to give up this concept that you are responsible for somebody else and what they do. You're not unless you motivated them to do it. Then you're partially responsible. But aside from that, you're not responsible at all. They have free will. They have a choice and decision to make. So any person who has this sort of idea will go down the track of believing that they feel quite strongly, they must impress strongly upon people to be careful of where they're going, careful of the hell, right? And, uh, and while it's right to impress upon somebody strongly, you know, that the results of their actions are not going to be good, it's not good to use the fear as a motivating factor for them to be good. Because fear in the end does not motivate people to be good. It just motivates people to avoid being bad. Mm -hmm. And I hope that people who are listeners get that. Fear only motivates you to avoid something. It doesn't motivate you to have a desire, a pure desire for something different. Yeah. Now, what God wants us to do is have a pure desire for love. That is the driving force. So anybody who's motivated by fear will not have a pure desire for love. That's the trouble of threatening people with hell. 
-hmm. is that you are not motivating them to have a pure desire for love. You're motivating them to avoid a punishment. And that's a sad fact. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. So what about um, this idea that priests and religious leaders want to control people through fear? You've mentioned they have a concern, a, a fear-based concern, but what about this idea of actually controlling people? Yeah, well, historically, um, particularly through the Dark Ages, it was very prevalent that priests and ministers wanted more than just to advise a flock about how to be loving people. They wanted total dominion and control over their people. Mm -hmm. And this is why the Dark Ages actually occurred. You know, the Spanish Inquisition, for example, is a good example of how distorted sometimes ministers and leaders get once they go down this track of believing that they are God's instrument on earth mm -hmm. to punish people whenever they see fit. And, to, and, and they did that. You know, many of these ministers were, were terrible people, to be mm -hmm. blank, evil people, who all they wanted to do was rape woman after woman, and all they wanted to do was take the wealth of other people. They wanted to create fear and, and pain in people around them, and they just ruled with iron fists, and many of them are still in hell, in the hells of the spirit world, as a result of their choices, their unloving choices to damage other people. So historically, there have been many ministers and priests who have desired to control other people through fear. And, you know, one way to, f to cause a person to fear is say, God is going to punish you if you don't do this. And if a person finishes up believing that, then you've got control of them. Yeah. If, when I say God is not going to punish you for doing anything, the ministers have a heart attack almost. Is they go, well, why is anybody going to do anything good then? And I say, because they want to love. Mm. That's the only thing that is going to help them do anything good. Not fear. Mm. Fear is just going to help them avoid doing anything bad. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the difference. So I, I feel quite strongly that there are some ministers who are sincere and who are deceived themselves when it comes to the Bible. There are other ministers who are not sincere and all they want is control and power over people. There are some ministers who are afraid for their flock and so they put fear into their flock so their flock does Mm -hmm. whatever they you know, feel is the right thing to do. Each one of those things are not based around love, so they can never have a good outcome. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, they don't have a good outcome. When these people pass into the spirit world, they often find themselves in the place that I will not find myself, and mm -hmm. that is in the hells. And this man who's making, who made this original question to us, stating that I'll be in the hell because I'm a deceiver or a false prophet, um, he has no knowledge whatsoever of one particular fact, and that is he will find in the future that he has been deceived by some people who are deceivers and false prophets and by other people who are well-meaning and intentioned but who believe the same deceit. Mm. And in the future he will come to see that if he does arrive in hell that he has a way of getting out. Yeah. And it's not going to be consigned there forever. And, uh, and I truly, which is great, isn't which, it? Which is great, which yeah. is something I feel he needs to allow himself to do. And I feel quite strongly that if he does that, um, his life would benefit quite immensely if he, if he allowed himself to see that. But I, but I do feel that a lot of the emails that we receive, we cannot really respond to because they are unloving in their way in which they are delivered. They are not questions, they are just statements of judgment. Mm -hmm. People do not know us and they're making these judgments based on media presentations that are also false, which is a very dangerous thing to do yeah. because it, you're basing your assumptions and your character assassinations on other people's assumptions and character assassinations. And that is never a very wise course of action. And in the end, they might find they miss out on a lot of new truths that Jesus can teach them in this process just by ignoring the fact that Jesus has come and the man who's claiming to be Jesus that everybody thinks isn't is actually the one who is Jesus. Yeah. And, and he, they fin could finish up learning a lot more about the Bible and about life and about God than they currently know if they had a more open mind yeah. Yeah. and a more open heart, yeah. which I, I suppose is the more important thing. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay.